Thanks to the support as a channel member, Austin Hartman. We've got some good news, some bad news, and some more bad news. We might do like a good news sandwich. So we'll start with the first piece of bad news. First piece of bad news, we've had a rubbish start to the season and I'm back not a million miles away from where the club was when I arrived about 11 months ago. So that's bad, bad news number one. Good news, um, we've got our first Champions League game of the entire series today. And then the other piece of bad news is that our Champions League group contains Borussia Dortmund, Celtic and Ajax. And that's quite a difficult group for a team that's in poor form. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 10 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first Champions League game of the season, of the series, in fact, away against Borussia Dortmund. And we're also away against Fulham in the Premier League. Since you were last with me, um, it's like I say, it's been a little bit hit and miss. And um, we obviously beat Real Madrid to win the European Super Cup, but then immediately lost to Brighton, but then won the North London derby and beat Man City. And I'm thinking, hey, this is easy peasy. And then we lost to Leicester. So five games into the Premier League season, we're down in 13th place. It's not a disaster. It's not a problem yet because we can still fight our way back up into the reckoning. But we wanted to be title challengers this year. We wanted to be qualifying for the Champions League through the league this year. And at the moment, as much as I hesitate to say this in front of the comments section, Peterborough are much closer to doing that than I am. Let's go and beat Dortmund to make me feel better. And this is the team that we're going to be taking there to try and do that. We've got Dragovski in goal, a back four of Saka, Gabriel, Gascon and Williams, Barrow and Martinez in midfield, Magno, Pedri and Camera supporting João Pedro, up front. Why is João Pedro up front? I hear you cry. Um, because Liam Delap isn't the same Liam Delap he was last year. Remember when he was brilliant? Um, he's not brilliant at the moment. So we're going to give João Pedro a go back in the team and hopefully being our captain, being our leader, the guy who was the best player at the club when I arrived. We've upgraded a few times since, but he is still a captain and a leader and a very talented footballer. And someone who's uh, now actually wants to be here for the first time since I've been at the club. All last year, when he was getting 25 goals, mostly from the left wing, he wanted to leave. He now wants to be here. We've kept him on as captain. This is his opportunity to show me that he's the man to lead the line. If Delap's going to go into poor form, let's uh, let's give João Pedro a run in the side, or at least one game. One game now to see if he's better than uh, Delap has been. That was a big opportunity for Magno, who, to be fair, has been a disappointment so far. I know he's going to be one of the, he's one of those players who doesn't yet speak English, so it's going to take him a little bit of time to bed in. But it's not as if we're lacking for Brazilians in this setup. There's plenty of people for him to talk to. João Pedro um, is obviously Brazilian. Pedri, um, Pedri's Spanish, isn't he, actually, rather than Portuguese. But Camara's Portuguese, so speaks the same language. Barro, I think, is Portuguese, isn't he? Um, Gabriel, obviously Brazilian. So there's plenty of players in this team who Magno can communicate with. It's it's not like he has no idea what he's being asked to do. So I am expecting a little bit more from him. He's the one player in our squad who's in the Premier League Dream Eleven, or he was at the start of the season. Be interesting to see if he's still there because he has started the season pretty poorly and looks like we've got a highlight here because it's ended up back with our defenders Martinez who Martinez is actually settling in quite nicely in this playmaker role in midfield now only 20 young wonder kid I am liking what I'm seeing from him and he's another one who doesn't speak English yet so it's going to take him a little bit of time to learn the lingo we've just won a penalty here through Magno I think is the ref giving the penalty he is he stood right next to the penalty spot get your finger out referee um, he's just checking with one of the other many referees. We have a penalty. See, I told you Magno was a threat. Um, and it's going to be... Who is that taking the penalty? And this is João Pedro from the penalty spot. And he scores. It's Dortmund nil, Arsenal 1. And this would be an enormous start to what is, looking through the groups, a very difficult group. I know whenever I say stuff like this with teams like Ajax and Celtic, the response from you lot is always, Kev, you should be better than Ajax and Celtic. Okay, Fair enough. But, you know, Basel are in that group. Um, Wolves are in that group. Besiktas are in that group. I would say I'd take... I mean, obviously, we couldn't have been in the same group as Wolves, but um, I would have taken Besiktas or Basel ahead of Celtic or Ajax, for sure. Um, for, for third and fourth 
uh, tier teams or seeded teams or however it's described, we probably got the best one in each seed level. Uh, Magno with the shot, Nick. Just it goes high and wide, especially considering we were top seeds. Because as Europa as Europa League winners, we get a top seed. So we're the top seed in this group. So presumably Dortmund would have been second seed, Ajax third seed, Celtic fourth seed. From all the fourth seed groups, I don't think they come much more difficult than Celtic. Right, we're going to bring Carlos Alberto on, another Brazilian to communicate with Magno, um, who speaks English because of his time at Manchester City. And we're also going to take we're going to take off Rui Camera and bring um, Almada on, and we're going to take off Magno and bring on Liam Delap, and we're just going to shuffle all of this around to fit all of these boys in. That seems to be a pretty sensible way to have them arranged. Um, Jao Pedro going back out into the right hand side where he's played a little bit of football recently and Delap while we're ahead in a game with an opportunity to show us what he can do. Celtic three nil up away from home against Ajax. Maybe Ajax aren't going to be the threat that we worried they might be because obviously we knocked Celtic out of the Europa League last year. But to be fair to Celtic, they did get to the semi-final of the Europa League last year. But we beat them quite comfortably. So if we're better than Celtic and Celtic are better than Ajax and we're better than Dortmund apparently, perhaps this group isn't as bad as I thought it was. I've already talked myself out of it when we've not even finished a game yet. João Pedro with a terrible attempt at a shot um, screws it well wide and we are leaving the door open here for a Dortmund equaliser. Five minutes left on the clock. They've got the ball. And it would be very nice if someone could just do a little bit of closing down and get the ball off them. And that's some good work there for, I think that, I don't even know who that is. Barrow, maybe? Is he still on the pitch? He is. It's probably Barrow. And there is the equaliser. Maybe we're not better than Dortmund after all. That has been sloppy. And this has been a bit of a, a, bit of a marker of our season so far. We are just a little bit sloppy. Defensively, I think some of that, some of that I'm going to blame on not getting the extra defender I wanted in the summer. I'm not sure about Gabriel or Gascon as real top tier defenders. Gascon, I think, will get there. Gabriel's days are numbered. Parsons is going in that spot at some point. Saka obviously is not a left back, but I think Tierney, part, it's partly Tierney's close to past it. He's 31 now. Um, and partly Saka's too good to not be in the team. And um, there's no room for him further forward. I'll take a draw. I would have taken a draw to begin with, but it is another frustrating, another frustrating result where sometimes we're brilliant and sometimes we're rubbish and sometimes we're just kind of in between and we need to figure out what we are and get into some kind of form one way or the other. Preferably one way. We don't want the other. The other terrifies me. Let's go and beat Fulham. One change for the Fulham game then. I'm... I'm I'm trying not to fiddle too much while I work out what is right. Remy comes in for Williams, but other than that, and um, we continue with João Pedro up front and continue. What is WTG? Pleased his teammate has been made a promise. Who? What have I promised to somebody? What have I done here? I don't, I don't know. Has been treated. Aya, we need to get rid of. That could be what's causing the entire problem. Um, I tried to get rid of Aya while he was injured, and now everyone's grumpy about the fact that I didn't actually manage to get rid of him, and he's rabble rousing. He could be the one causing the poor form. We probably need to get rid of him sooner rather than later. So I guess. Oh no, so it's Pedri who's been promised something. Promised to improve the club's coaching team. Pleased is. I, I don't remember promising that. And our coaching team is largely the best in the Premier League. Why does Pedri care if we get a better goalkeeper handling or distribution coach? Because that's the only way we can improve the coaching team, Pedri. Would you look at the graphs, Pedri? And everyone's agreeing with him. Apart from the goalkeeper. Oh, this game. This game is breaking me this week. Right, let's try and beat Fulham. Where? There's, I know there's logic in there. I'm sure it's lovely. I just don't fully understand. The media have been on your backs for ages now, have they? When? Am I getting sacked here? Because it's not going that badly. A win here when we're back up in the Europa League spots. <laughs> I'm going to get sacked. And I don't even know why, because it's going quite well. We've just got a couple of disruptive influences, I guess. 
I can't have Pedri be a problem because I'm hoping to just quietly slip Thiago Almada out the door in January and no one notices he's gone. But I if I've got to get rid of Pedri, I can't lose both my attacking midfielders. Ah. Uh, okay. This is... Um, Aya's got to go. And we've got to stop... I mean, is that... Oh, no. We can't lose against Fulham. We know this Arsenal board do get a bit sacky. They sacked Thierry Henry last year for a start like this. Obviously, it wasn't quite this bad. And when I arrived, I don't think we'd even won a game, whereas we've already beaten Tottenham and Manchester City this season. So it's and we've won the Europa Super Cup and the champ and the community show. We've got two trophies on the books this year already. I'd like to think I'm immune until Christmas at least. And if if by then we can move higher on. That could turn things around, but we've got to fix things sooner than then, especially because we saw in the season review in the transfer special a few days ago that despite telling me they just wanted to avoid relegation, it seems they judged me on finishing the bottom half, finishing in the bottom half of the table when they were expecting Europa League qualification at the start of the year. So because of some kind of another game AI glitch, I'm discovering more and more of these all the time because of another AI glitch, last season's incredible season a 30-game unbeaten run, two cup competitions. That's been considered a poor season. And I combine this with a poor start in which we've delivered two trophies already and got a draw away against Dortmund and beaten our local rivals. But now we're losing against Fulham because of the Champions League hangover. I genuinely am kind of expecting to be brought into the chairman's office after this game for the famous you need to win eight games in your next five matches talk. <laughs> oh, I'll just, I'll have to leave YouTube if that happens. I will never, ever hear the end of it. Can you imagine? Camera to Remy. Remy's done quite well here to get past his man. Remy, though, with the cross, doesn't get anywhere. And Gascon, luckily, is coming across to cover. We're 2-0 down against Fulham, and this is utterly unacceptable. Martinez plays it through to Remy, who's in behind again. Low cross, Magno's there, and there is a goal back. It's 2-1. It's a second goal of the season for Magno. And um, hopefully we turn this around and win this game. Because anything other than a win, and I am starting to get a little bit worried. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to worry. I'm, I'm a man with high blood pressure. I've mentioned it before. Worrying isn't good for me. Um, <laughs> look, posher above us in the league. Oh, no. Should we go back to Kettering? Um, they're drawing away against Manchester City. I know we've already beaten City this year, but we've been terrible away from home. Um, oh, for goodness sake. What is going on? That's Saka. I think we have to look at Saka and say, Kieran Tierney probably doesn't let that happen. Maybe it's time to bring Tierney back in the side, even though he's a thousand years old. Saka, probably not a left back. Right. What are we going to do here? We go and attack him. I'm not going to make substitution. I'm going to give him 15 minutes. And then we'll see what we're going to do. And we'll, we'll try and figure out what's next. <laughs> Is it time to pull the long throws out of the repertoire? Anything? Oh my, that's got to be offside. Referee, that has to be offside, surely. I think it is offside. If we go four down against Fulham... I might just resign. Right, okay. We're still in this, thankfully. I don't want to see the replay. It was clearly offside when it happened. Right, we have a corner. Saka to take. A goal here would be lovely. Gabriel, and we're so weak at corners. And I, it doesn't make sense. I look at the two guys we're aiming for. They should be lethal and they're not. It must be the takers that are the problem. But look at all the tippy-tappy creative players we've got. There's a dozen players in this team who could hit a good corner. Oh, okay. We've got to get rid of Aya. Can we release him? Mutual terminal. We've just got to get him out. I'm officially completely blaming him. I've had this happen in FM before. If you get a player who's unhappy and they're influential and other players agree with them, there is pretty much nothing else you can do until you get rid of them or cheer them up. And I don't see how we're going to cheer him up and we can't get rid of him until January. And we can't play like this until January. 
even, I mean, it's not even that we've been unlucky. We have been absolutely battered by Fulham. <laughs> oh, God. Right. The lap's coming on. Alberto's coming on. And Tommy Doyle's coming on. Just going to do a triple. And hope that their magic. Right. Camera's won the ball back there. Can we. We've got. I mean, we've got to do something. This is. This is painful. Jao Pedro's in. He's got a goal back. Right. We're well, perhaps. Has it been. Is he actually disallowing that referee? No. It wasn't offside. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm furious. I've not felt this frustrated with football manager since the uh, the Leicester game against Liverpool that you'll remember if you watch the Leicester series. And that was just a one-off blip. This I feel is part of a bigger problem. Right, Magno's scored it. See, Magno's not the issue. Magno's good. Let's, um, let's, what should we do? I'm going to berate them. Berate the entire team immediately after we score. Will that fire them up? If we can get a draw out of this now, this will be a turning point, I hope. Right, Saka, playing it across. Terrible, terrible pass from Saka. Ah. He's becoming a scapegoat and it's unfair because he's playing out of position. We should have signed a proper left back. And Saka could be an option on that right-hand side now, where we know he's a big threat. Right, Delap to Martinez. Carlos Alberto on the right. He's got no one in the middle because Delap dropped deep. There's the cross. He was looking for Magno again, but it's cleared by Fulham. We've got 20 minutes left and we are starting to play well. Magno with a flick on to Delap. And there's another goal back. If the referee's disallowing it again... What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> So we've now had two goals disallowed. The game is punishing me and I don't care for it. More. I'm chewing my thumb. I've got to stop. Right, Magno, back to Saka. Cross. Carlos Alberto. And it's gone wide. The XG must be looking so different now. It's still We're still not looking great on it. Demand more. Come on, boys. Pedri's shattered. But we are still attacking. We're clearly good enough to beat this Fulham side based on little snatches of play that we see. We just, we're in poor form. Saka, pushing forward on the left. That's what we want to see from him. And it's an absolute nightmare for the Fulham defence. That's terrible defending. Only in football manager, boys and girls. But with 10 minutes left, we only need one more goal. This is one of those times where the game's just going to give us that false hope, isn't it? And it's not going to be another highlight now. We've fought back really well. We've had two goals disallowed. But now we're not going to get a highlight. Are you serious? Right, here we go. We should have turned long throws on. Remy to Carlos Alberto. This is brilliant from him. And there's the equaliser. It's 4-4. Magno with a hat trick. I never doubted him for a second. What a signing. What a manager. What a time to be alive. It's Fulham 4. Arsenal 4. They should sack me for how excited I am about conceding four goals against Fulham. But we've got probably five minutes left. Push forward more, boys. Let's grab a winner. This could be our turning point. Now we're not going to get another highlight. At least we didn't lose. That's the important thing. We didn't lose. Fingers crossed. By the time you next see me, I'll have calmed down a bit. And we we'll, might be in the top half of the table. We can't keep hovering around down there. You'd, you played well. Good boy. Right, we'll be back tomorrow for... One of the Ajax games. Um, in fact, it'll be the second one because then we can do Ajax and Peterborough in tomorrow's episode. Because I know you lot would love to see Posh beat me and that be the game that gets me sacked. You would love it. So we'll come back for that. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.